Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe and living your best lockdown life. So thanks for joining us today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about William Hill, uh, how we're using DevOps principles to take the company forward from good to great. So my name is Gareth Sefton and I'm the infrastructure and cloud tooling product owner at William Hill. So let me start by telling you a little bit about who William Hill are, a little bit about the history of the company and some of the major milestones in the last 80 years. So William Hill is one of the world's leading betting and gaming companies employing over 16,000 people worldwide. It all started back in 1934, where William Hill started taking started the company by taking bets over phone and via mail. So right from the start, he was taking an innovative approach to reach and excite our customers. In 1966, five years after the legalization of betting shops in the UK, William Hill started to expand the company by acquiring existing outlets. And that acquisition would become a major driver for the company's growth over the following years from then, and continues to be part of our growth strategy to date. In 1998, saw the launch of the online sports book, soon quickly followed in 2000 by the online casino. So originally established in the UK, this was moved to Gibraltar in 2009. But that move included the migration of servers from our UK data centers to the data centers in Gibraltar, which is a really interesting project, really quick timescales, but I think that nobody at William Hill would want to repeat anytime soon. In 2012, we established William Hill US with a focus on retail and mobile gambling in Nevada. This gave William Hill a foot in the door for when in 2018, the Supreme Court of the United States declared the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act, PASPA, unconstitutional. So this allowed states to start legalizing gambling and regulate sports betting. So William Hill was one of the first companies to be able to capitalize on that opportunity with access secured to 24 states already and expecting more to come. And each state comes with its own interpretation of the rules, which keeps us on our toes. In 2016, we acquired the betting and gaming digital solutions company, Grand Parade in Krakow. So this allowed us to rapidly ramp up the scale of our development teams, bringing in that, that existing expertise that Grand Parade had, particularly around UX, UI design. So it really enhanced our creative capabilities. Then, in recently, in February 2019, we completed the acquisition of Mr. Green, and with that, an expanded European footprint in a fast-growing online betting and gaming markets. So whilst this just scratches the surface of what of William Hill's long-established history, what it does show is that even from day one, we've used innovation, acquisition, and making bold decisions to take the company forward. And that also, we are not an organisation that was born in the cloud. In fact, we were born in the back streets of London. So this history provides valuable lessons that we can apply today to take the company forward, but also creates a few interesting challenges that we need to address. So one of the things I didn't show on the previous slide, but possibly an important milestone for William Hill as well, was I joined the company in 1999. So fresh from university, driven by a desire and a motivation to remove that minus sign from the start from the start of my bank balance now without really knowing it at the time and probably not being a conscious decision as i reflect back on my roles i've had i can map them against the, the areas that devops is looking to address and it shows that i've kind of had this this front row, row seat to some of the challenges that have grown up over the years and that we're trying to fix so I started in tech, my tech journey as an applications analyst, which was a fancy word for a developer. I think back in the 2000s, for some reason, every single one of our tech jobs seemed to have the word analyst in there somewhere. So back in that role, I took an interest in our Virgin control systems and the delivery life cycle we're using. I mean, for the Virgin control systems, it was, it was an act of kindness. You know, these were not so much servers, it was a desktop hiding in the corner somewhere, gathering dust. The only maintenance that was ever performed in it was when it actually got lit up, or accidentally got turned off, either to plug the Hoover or someone to charge their phone. We're recognizing the importance of treating these tools with care was key. And this led me on through my journey through the other roles shown here. 
into my current position of tooling product owner. Now along the way, my roles have involved, most of the roles have involved working closely with development and with operations people. Mostly, we're nice and collaborative, we've got things done, but it'd be fair to say that along the way, there has been the odd bit of frustration and conflict. In fact, I have a lot of sympathy for anybody that does an environments manager role, if it was anything like the one I did. One of the observations that, that I've managed to make along this path, and I kind of hope this isn't too controversial, but whether you work in development or operations, we all have a lot in common. Everyone I know wants to do the best job they can, but they get frustrated when they have no control over completing a piece of work or that an issue they're working on has been caused by factors outside their control. For many of my roles, bridging that gap between development and operations teams was key to my success. But that came for just ensuring we're providing the right information, just acting that as interface between the two. So when I started to hear about DevOps and started to read up on DevOps, I was hooked from day one. In fact, I remember reading in the DevOps handbook, there's a paragraph early on that says, imagine a world where product owners, development, QA, IT operations, and infosec work together, not only to help each other, but also to ensure that the overall organization succeeds. Those words express better than I ever, I ever could what I wanted to achieve in my career and what I still get a buzz out of trying to fix. Now, I confess that during my career, I was probably never the most technical person in my team, but built up a reputation of being someone that we could go to to get things fixed. Now, I was mainly trying to get the best out of others, not fixing things myself. So my Friday